Hi, Houghton. I hope you're doing well, staying safe. So we're getting pretty close to the end of the year here. Um, as I film this video, we have two full weeks left after this one. So Mrs. Blihar, Miss Wilkie, and I continue to talk about the themes that we want to share with you. And this week's theme, well, it is inspired by our wonderful fourth graders. Our fourth grade athletes who, since kindergarten, have been doing an amazing job living and practicing the Houghton core values, working so hard in all your specials, working so hard in all of your classes with all of your teachers. We, as a staff, have been truly fortunate and blessed to have had the chance to work with you. So this week, what I'd like to do is I'd like to share with you some field day inspired activities and games that you can play at home, in your yard or in your living room. Now, the reason why this goes with our fabulous fourth graders is because we were going to do a field day this year, um, really my first ever proper field day, um, and we were going to have it at the fourth grade level um, with all of the classes. So that was one source of sadness for me that we missed that. So what I have for you now is some of the activities that we were going to enjoy uh, that day. Uh, not all of them, many of these activities, especially the ones that happen inside, have been inspired by the quarantine, us being at home. But some of them, the ones, especially the ones you can do outside, those are activities that we were going to enjoy um, on our field day. It was going to be one day in June. So here we are, almost in June. So let's enjoy some of these field day activities together. All grade levels can do these activities, not just our fourth grade, but I just want our fourth graders to know, our special fourth graders, boys and girls, that these are all presented with you in mind. So without any further delay, let's get started with some of our field day inspired activities. So our first field day inspired activity is going to be called bowl ball. With bowl ball you're going to need some materials that you can find around the house around the kitchen. So the first thing you're going to need uh, are six bowls. Now glass bowls or even pots that you would use to cook water in would work really well for this. So definitely get mom and dad's permission before you start handling any type of glass bowl or any pot or pan. You're gonna take the six bowls and you're gonna spread them out in a triangle on the floor, about three or four inches apart from each other. Then you're gonna take some paper, I'm taking post-its and a marker, and you're going to assign values to each bowl. Now it's totally up to you. It could be one, could be 10, could be 20, totally up to you. And then you're gonna take that piece of paper with the number on it, with the number of points, and you're gonna put one point total in each bowl. And then from there, you're going to walk off maybe six or eight feet away from the bowls. And you'll put down a line, could be a towel, could be a pillow, and it could be like the edge of a chair. And you are going to throw a ball from behind that line at one of the six bowls. Now, you have one minute on the clock, one minute and one minute only, to see how many points you can score. You throw the ball from behind the line, you see if it goes into one of the bowls. If it does, you get that amount of points. Whether it goes in or not, you run and get the ball, run back, throw again. So one minute to get as many points as you can. You might also want to have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen next to you so you could keep track of your score as you're going along, okay? So I'm gonna show you how this is set up and then I'll play it for a little bit. One more thing, athletes, for bowl ball, you're going to want a ball that's a little bit smaller and if you are using glass, you want the ball to be on the soft side. So I recommend making your own ball with a pair of socks. So when you take your pair of socks, uh, you take them and you hold them by the toe, straight up and down like that, and then you start to roll them down all the way to the elastic part, the opening, the part that goes around your ankle or your calf. And then once you get down here, you open it up, fold it over, and you have yourself 
a little ball. And I'm going to kind of shape it more into a sphere. And this is what I'm gonna to use to throw. Nice and safe, I know it's not gonna break the glass. Okay, so here is my setup for bowl ball. I've got my six bowls um, in a triangular shape, okay? Much like you would see uh, bowling pins at a bowling alley. Let me just move that one over just a smidge. So I have my point values. The first bowl is worth one. The next two I have worth five. And then the back three, I have them each worth 10 points. Now I walked off eight steps, okay? Roughly eight feet to this piece of scrap paper. And I am going to throw from behind this paper to those bowls. I'm gonna give myself one minute on my stopwatch. There it is. One minute on my stopwatch to see how many points I can score. Okay, so when I throw athletes, remember, tick, tock, step with that front opposite foot, and rock, and yes, that's 10 points. So the timer has begun, and I am going to keep going for one minute, and I am going to try, whoa, that was really lucky, it bounced out of the five and into the 10, that's worth 10, so I'm up to 20. So, my score was 30, 30 points. This is bowl ball, remember your good throwing form. Tick, talk, step with the opposite foot and rock, release the ball, and good luck. Hopefully you'll get a very high score. All right, on to our next game. Hi athletes. So here's our next field day inspired game. It's called Trap the Water Bottle or Water Bottle Trap. And my mission is to try to get this ball, okay, my homemade sock ball is making another appearance, and a water bottle trapped underneath a laundry basket. So you're gonna need a ball, you're gonna need an empty water bottle, preferably one of those 16 ounce ones, and a laundry basket or some type of bucket that will be supported by the water bottle. Now, my mission is to roll this ball and I'm going to be about eight to 10 feet away and I'm trying to hit the water bottle. I need to hit the water bottle. If you don't hit the water bottle, sorry, no points at all. So there's a one way to get one point, there's another way to get two points and then there's a third way to get three points. The way you can get one point is if you roll the ball and you get the ball, but not the water bottle trapped inside the basket. If you do that, that is worth one point. If you roll the ball and you get the bottle trapped under the basket, but not the ball, so bottle only, no ball, that's worth two points. And finally, if you get the ball and the water bottle trapped underneath the laundry basket, that is a three-pointer. That is the most points you can get. So remember, you've got to roll and hit the water bottle first. Okay, all right. So I've got one minute set here on my clock. So I'm going to see how many points I can score in one minute. And I challenge you to do the same. Okay, all right, athletes. So you're gonna do this standing, but since I want you to be able to see um, how this works and how the scoring works, I am going to do it down on a knee, but you certainly do not have to do that when you play this game at home. So here I am approximately 10 feet away from the water bottle and the basket that's balanced upon the water bottle, and I'm trying to hit the ball. Here we go. So I will start my clock right here. Here we go, we've begun. So I roll it and so nothing, nothing there. Okay, I did not knock anything over. So that is a three-pointer because I got the sock ball and the water bottle trapped underneath the basket. Three points for me. Okay, I only have 22 seconds left. There's another three points for me, so I'm up to six.
And one minute is up. All right. Hi, Houghton. So here is another field day inspired game for us. It's called Penguin Race, and here is the sock ball once again making another appearance, and this is going to be your precious penguin egg. You're also going to need two cups, um, plastic cups. I'm using a couple of these reusable plastic cups that we drink from, and you're gonna put them approximately 15 to 20 feet apart. Um, you don't necessarily have to measure that, but if mom or dad um, or you counted heel toe, heel toe, 20 steps, 25 steps, that ought to do it. Now, you could play this by yourself or you could play it against a family member. And if you're playing by yourself, the idea is to waddle with the egg between your knees down around one cone all the way back to the other. Oh, I forgot something. When you get to the cone, before you go around it, I want you to flip it over, okay? So if it's looking like this, you bend down with the egg still being well taken care of between your knees, you flip it over so now it's like that. And then you go back, waddle back as quickly as one can waddle, and you get to the next cup, which will probably be down, and then you flip it back over, and then you go back. So again, if you're going solo, you have one minute to see how many times you can flip the cups while waddling back and forth, keeping the egg between your knees. Now, if you are playing against somebody, you're going to need a total of four cups. So you would have your two cups and then the person you're playing against would have their two cups. And you're trying to see who can flip six cups first or the cup six different times, okay? So um, I'm gonna play by myself. So I have one minute on the clock to see how many times I can flip over a cup. All right, see how I do. Okay, athletes, I'm ready to do the penguin race. Now, I forgot to mention something. If the egg, if you drop it, if it falls out from between your knees, you need to do five jumping jacks before you put it back in. You don't need to go back and start at the beginning, but you do need to do five jumping jacks right on the spot before you put the egg back. All right. So, see, let me get my timer. Remember to flip the cup when you get there. All right, I hope you can see it from the angle that I have my iPad at. Here we go. So that's two cups for me. I've dropped it twice. Four. Okay, so I was able to walk like a penguin and flip the cups over four different times. And I dropped the egg two times. So I believe that when I give myself another minute here, I'm gonna do better. I might get five or six. All right, boys and girls, that's how you do it solo. If you wanted to do it versus a family member, then you both have your own set of cups. Who can flip it over six total times?